what is up guys welcome back so we got the cab up in the air for i feel like the hundredth time but i think today's the day it goes on the chassis forever um i'm really excited we're planning on hearing this thing run today whether that happens or not it'll still be okay uh, but we did have a delay yesterday the power was out almost all morning well all day pretty much it didn't come on yeah, till like 30 minutes before dark so um he did all he could do without power and uh, now i know how amish feel i'm like man how do they get well by? that's probably why they don't build trucks homie they have buggies well okay <laughs> continue on anyways um the goal is to hear it run so let's get started and uh whenever the power went out hannah came out here to see if i did well, something I, yeah i was doing dishes and i thought oh geez what'd he do and it wasn't me the, uh, <laughs> someone snapped the power pole off also it wasn't me so yes but i have been inside before and the lights flickered and went off and i came out here and i think he just had too much plugged in or going on he blew a breaker so yeah. i wanted to make sure you know he was okay and when i come you out here know. he was like what what's wrong <laughs> so. but yeah let's put this cab down i want to show you guys i got the firewall done it's nothing fancy we're gonna go back and do bed liner and stuff uh later and i got the the cab mount frenched in hannah said where'd you learn the word french yeah. and i'm like that's that's an automotive term okay so um i got a car let's say carved I got the cab mount carved out of the way for the steering column, and I'll show you guys that now. Anyways, so here's what we got. We got the firewall done up. It's not pretty, but it's enough clearance to accept that big DT-466. The steering is now coming through the cab mount, and then, yes, I still have a hole there. And the reason I didn't go ahead and fill it in with some because sheet metal. we're taking it to Daytona, and he knows I'll need AC. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it'll blow up right your pant yeah. right up your pant leg yeah but nice. <laughs> that'll be good for you <laughs> so i didn't do this section because the steering column comes through there and i i can go ahead and sheet that in later but i had to get some i had to get all this done because i didn't want um you know sparks and slag and stuff like that on top of the engine and burn stuff up can we just take a moment to look at my little um French my job. French in job Hannah's been giving me mm -hmm. a hard time because I said that but here is our swing this is the original if you guys remember this is the original cab mount clutch pedal assembly slides through this I got fresh it Fre it is very fresh yeah. paint um so you can kind of see it in there and then I made a pocket for the steering column to come through so that is that uh, I went ahead and put the steering column in there is our brake manifold for the airlines and i guess we're ready i made a little hump in the floor here for the the turbo to set in i think we're ready you ready to let this thing down i am ready move that bus <sighs> speaking of buses that, i'm i'm on the bus kick i right know now. you are don't mind our yard it looks like the beverly Babe, it always here. looks like this i'm sure they're used to it uh, and this is clean compared to what it was yesterday hey, jack hey corn dog mm -hmm. corn nugget baby doll baby homie <laughs> <laughs> hannah hates when the ups gets here because she i hides. will hide from them she'll I call me hide. she's like i'm hiding in the closet the ups truck's here i'm like <laughs> okay that's i do i don't i something's weird about it but i also said it could be ptsd or whatever that is from when i was a kid and Groby's would come to like collect our couch when I was younger. So my mom and Haley and I, Olivia and Tori, we'd all like hide from the guy that's collecting our couch so he couldn't come in and get it. Let's go, babe. I can't, now he's in my way. I gotta let this up. I gotta pull the chassis for it. Look at the dog, idiot. Well, ain't Minnie. So you got you some treats. Pretty sure this is some air ride stuff for the van. Got me something good? Yeah, I think I got one. Check it out, look what we got. We got some switch suspension parts. So that's probably most likely the airbags for the Grumman van. That's exciting. We got parts coming in on the daily. He is romping on that yeah, truck, ain't he? Is. But that's pretty cool. We got we got some more packages inside yeah, for the Grumman. Get this thing going, I know, babe. okay. time to do the wiring so this is going to be the driver's side this side here is the passenger side 
if you guys remember right i did go ahead and label every single wire so it should be just a plug and play kind of thing at this point i'm sure it's not going to be that simple but i guess let's go ahead and throw this thing in there and just go from there No, a lot of this is not going to be able to, I mean, we could record it, but you guys would be bored out of your mind. So, um, right now he's, I'll turn this around and show you what he's doing. Right now we're just trying to figure out everything. Where everything goes. Yeah. Where it gets plugged in at and all of that. Kind of a mess. So I got our main fuse box thingamajig here so all the connectors plug into here you guys seen us cut the hole in that uh the one thing i didn't do was i forgot to put a hole in the floor for this connector so i measured it put it in there um everything is actually wiring up pretty nicely uh it's kind of more compact because the international cab is a lot bigger but as you can see i got the airlines running to it i got one more airline to hook up uh, this big plug here will plug into this just like that. And then there was another one somewhere. Where'd the round <laughs> one go? Oh, here. This all goes over here like this. So that'll plug into there. This will plug into here. And then this big fat daddy here plugs into that. So it's all working out. I am glad I labeled a lot of the stuff. So this stuff is common sense. I mean, big plug with big plug, straight up and down plug with that and the round, the round. But like the airlines, I'm, I'm glad I took the time and labeled everything. I labeled these one, two, three, and four. So everything's plugging in nice. And then going into the inside of the cab. Going oh, in golly. Here, yeah. It, you got the whole this. wiring harness in there? It's in there, yeah. <laughs> so I labeled everything. Like this is the steering. So the steering was able to hook back up. Um, this hot spot is going to have to be bolted to here, but I haven't been able to do that yet because I had to drill a hole in the floor and I didn't want everything in the way. So this fuse box, this fuse box, I plan on it now that I got that established. Hold on. So these wires go here. <laughs> I mean, it may not look pretty for Daytona, but it'll be there. And then once we get home... After that, we can. Well, I'm trying. I'm gonna make it as well, nice. Well, I as know you are, but I'm saying it may not be the most beautiful thing just yet. Yeah, that's the thing is by doing it this way, you kind of gotta work with what you got. Whenever I do, um, like the 14 circuit Jags uh, breaker box or fuse panel that I put in the normal trucks. I like doing that because you can run the wire. Say if you need five foot of wire, you can run five foot. Of, you know, it comes with you know, you can run it where you want. Whenever you're doing a harness that's already established, you pretty much work with what you got and put it where it kind of wants to lay. For an example, like this fuse box, you know, you could either put it this way or this way, but if you wanted all the wires longer, that's pretty much out of the question unless you splice every single wire and you, you'd be a fool to do that, I would, I would think. So just kind of using what you got and where you can fit it. I don't know. It's kind of a mess, but make it the best. I was thinking if I bolt that to that like that, that'll be a good spot for that. And then bolt the hot spot on top of it. Anyways. It's a lot. It's a lot. So, so that is why we're not going to be recording a whole lot of wiring, just because it's, it's going to be a lot of figuring out. And it's, yeah, it's really going to be boring for you guys to watch. And it's kind of nice that I'm just me and myself doing Thinking it right now and, yeah. so i can kind of concentrate on this instead of trying to get angle so i do apologize but here in a second it's gonna get real fun because here in a second it's gonna start up so we hope yeah if we don't get it today we'll get it tomorrow definitely but um i might just pull an all-nighter and let's just drive it here in a second. okay we gotta bolt the cab down or we're gonna fall mm -hmm. off so the gauge cluster is in there. I got this guy in there, the push pull for the, the air brakes, got me some bolts. I'm glad I kind of thought about what I was doing. I put an inch bar here, inch bar here, fastened it. That le that gets me to the gauge cluster part. I don't really, I like the way it looks in there. That's not it, but we're going to have to figure out a way to fasten it. 
So my plan is to take the original 1965 gauge cluster, stick it in here, graft this piece to the back of the original piece, and that'll give me a nice place to fasten it with its original hardware. Here, 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 there, and there, and whatever. So that's that, so let's get to it. And it looks like FedEx is here now. It's probably more stuff for the Grumman van. I've, I've ordered a lot of stuff for it here lately, so I bet that's what he's got. Man, we are just, yep, weld on rear axle brackets. So here's some axle brackets for the Grumman. We got this big box for the Grumman. Just all the stuff's coming in today. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, I guess let's get this gauge cluster popped out of there and see if we can get it grafted to the back of the factory dash. Here's kind of my plan. This is the original gauge cluster out of the truck. I figured I'll go ahead and pull these out and then we'll cut it, you know, kind of get a little creative with how we cut it. And then this will be kind of, you know, I don't know, kind of take two into one kind of thing, I guess. I don't know how it's going to look. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I guess there's only one way to find out. So let's go ahead and rip this thing apart. Alright, so I know you guys were cringing telling me what tool I should be using, but to be honest with you guys, I don't really have a lot of tools. I use a grinder, and yes, someone on here is probably saying right now, well, if you didn't buy so many farm trucks, you could have more tools. You're exactly right. But I almost like doing it just because I'm proving that you don't really have to have much to get stuff done. So I had this one guy tell me one time, man, I could do a lot more if I had the tools you had. Clearly, he don't watch me because you guys know all I really have is the grinder, a welder, I have a drill press, and I'm just getting by. So, yes, there is different tools. There is a better tool to cut a radius out than a angle grinder. I get it. All right, let's see what this thing looks like. Don't look bad, I just wish this stupid cluster was up to it more. I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit. But even if I put that in there, that, that really don't look bad. And all honestly, I don't even need this to, to get it running, I guess. So I can always go back and fine tune this area. So I might go ahead and find me another project to work on in the meantime, so. There's that. I don't know. I almost wonder if I can make some kind of frame to hold this in place Because right now it's just going to flop around I don't want to glue it in there because if I if I windshield glue it in there That'd be the easiest thing to do, but I can't ever pull it out later So I almost wonder if there's a way I could fasten it down uh, Maybe get some fasteners come from The sides of it and then fasten it to the slip and maybe the same thing on this top and then put the The bezel or the trim piece around it I might do that. If I can find a way to fasten that on and then put that on there like that, honestly, that's probably good enough. And that, that doesn't look bad. It does have a little, I know you guys can't see it down here, but there is a little centerpiece that goes in there. So honestly, that don't look bad. I might just do that and then we can always fine tune it later. So there's that. Sucker. Um, we are walking to the back lot, get the computer because Corey has done a fabulous job i'm sure of wiring and now we're getting the computer i wish i wouldn't have took the cab on back here but i was trying to clean up the yard i know it don't look like we clean up the yard but i went ahead and took this cab back here and i should have pulled the computer before i took it but i didn't 
So we're taking a lovely uh, scenic way to our junkyard. Yes. Did you mow this, by the way? Yeah, I mowed it so you had a nice, it looks, nice little it looks beautiful. path. What I'd like to do right here is have like a little fire pit ring. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it'd be cool to have like some more cars back here with the headlights shining and then have you like- got plenty. I don't know, I gotta move them over here now. <laughs> but yeah, we're in our little junkyard. So I've had an idea real quick. I don't wanna bore you guys, but so this white school bus right here that we're passing, I think I'm gonna make that our um, prison bus. And then, that looks like one. I know it does. And then put some bars over the windshield mm -hmm. or windows, make a like a 70s style prison bus and then be our merch truck. I think that'd be cool. You walk in the one door, then you go out the back and yeah, no one wants it anyway. So I thought, hey, let's make a prison bus, prison merch truck. So there is that. All right. So I got the computer on the firewall. It looks really good. I was kind of surprised it fit right there because I th honestly thought I was going to have to put it on the bottom side of the hood, but it fits perfect. There's enough room above the intake there. Got it bolted on. All the wires worked. The wires come up underneath the, the intake tube here. And just go right up into it. It looks really good. So I think I got it all wired up and it should start, but kind of the dilemma now is I lost the key. So, once I find the key, we should be able to start this thing up. <laughs> we will just take a moment and appreciate, golly, these trees, how beautiful they are in the trail. We're, we're on a hunt. We're going to keep it. <laughs> Sorry, hold on. My finger's coming off. On the dash. Okay. Here we are, frantically looking for the key, as if the yard wasn't ugly enough out there. Where did you put all that stuff? To the side right now. To the side, that will never get picked up again. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but that's not it. So let's go look, retrace your steps. Where did where did I put them? Hannah took them out and put them inside. Mm hmm And I couldn't find them. Mm hmm Actually, they were in. I've been um, sweeping the driveway, and they were in a pile of trash. Yeah. All we need to do is go put it. Well, they really don't look like a truck key. I well, probably no. thought it was junk. But we did go back on our video of when we first started, and we <laughs> realized it was a red faded tag. So we found it. So let's see if we can get this thing to start. I did just try. It won't start. So I got something wrong. I knew it wasn't just going to be fired up. So, yeah. I think it will start. It's almost dark. But we found the key, and there was one wire. <laughs> well, found... we've been, like, doing this, turning it a little, <sighs> till it beeps. Hear that? And it did. So, you know, before, whenever we turn it, you didn't hear nothing. So we've been tracing down all the wires, there... making sure everything was plugged in. He found one that wasn't, and we got that noise. So we're ready. There we... was one wire that was on the main engine harness that ran... Uh, since I labeled it, it said firewall, so I got looking and inside the dash it got tangled up with the rest. I kind of just put it into it now. It's not really ran the right way, but I'm ready to hear this thing run. Me you ready to hear too, it run? yes. Uh, the only bad thing is it has zero cab mounts in it, so hopefully you don't shake the cab off the frame. Well, oh, golly, speaking. yeah. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's do it. Let's okay. It. Six days, homie. Well, Baby so doll. Golly. Right now, Corey's making sure there's nothing in the way of the fan or, you know, the belt. So, all right. Fire Just up the so time you machine. Guys know, oh. Six days. 
and we got her going. This is, well, we don't know if we yeah. got her going. But there's still a lot to do. That's well, not yeah. six days and it's finished. Six days, cab swap. Um, Monday and Tuesday is the only days we've been working on this. And uh, we still got to do the clutch linkage, which I got 90% of that done. We got about 10% on it. All right, let's 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 just stop talking. Let's go. Kay. Hopefully it turns off, too. Start it up and just shut it off. Start it up and let it idle and then shut it off. We don't want to run it. It should be fine to run forever, really. All right, you ready? No. Okay, here we go. Oh, let me check the turbo. Please, please. Hey, Something's under there. Hold on. It starts. We shut this door. Hold on, you got wires over here. I can check this <laughs> dipstick too. Okay, um, fire it up again. Fire up the time machine? Yeah. All right. Ready? Here we were outside and it's puking oil out the dash. Yeah, Tori uh, had me distracted. I got oil all in these. Try and hold it. Um, well, the problem was, it should be able, this right here. So this goes into the back of the dash and I forgot to plug it up. That's our oil pressure and it was spewing it out. That's all right. Uh, oh, well, it runs. Yeah? No, let me, you want me to just yeah. leave these down? Yeah, it's fine. It'll be all right. We're just oiling it up. Yeah, we are. Well, that sucks, but it runs. It's got oil pressure. Yeah. We could tell that because it's puking out of the dash. Because the way it is. I forgot. I, I thought about that earlier, but then I forgot. Oh, well. Definitely it, has oil and it's good and black. <laughs> it is the next day. Here's the gauge cluster. I made a, a frame out of some 16 gauge and bent it around there, then self-tapped it to a, a couple of the spots that weren't you know important i guess so here's my self-tapping screws self-tapped it to the side here here and down through here and then what i did was put a piece of angle iron on the bottom here and then this will bolt to the bottom of i guess the top of the steering column i don't know if it'll work i think it'll work but it's kind of the only way i can figure out how to hold it up in there hannah's trying to clean up her oil mess from yesterday but we got to get the inside of the cab cleared out so we can get the shifter in it and a handful of stuff before we can drive this thing on the road. That's exciting. So I went ahead and cut the material off the back. It didn't really need to be that long. And then I went and took some duct tape and I put around it so then it won't cut none of the wires. And in the process, I cut my finger. But duct tape, band-aid, we're ready to go. So this should sit in there. I did drill me a hole. This will bolt to the top of the steering column now. Well, it looks pretty good. I don't yeah. know. Kind of looks rednecky, but it ain't stupid if it works. So let's go try it. Try All right, you know what Corey just showed me? Scott, show him, babe. Show him how exciting. <laughs> yeah. So I got the gauge cluster in there, and um, now I'm this little the tab little here, scissors cut yeah, better. Those were the little scissors. Uh -huh. I just need a grinder. Well, anyways, I got the the gauge cluster in there i got it bolted down and then if you see this little void right here this little cap will set in there and if, if i ever have to take the gauge cluster out you just simply take this bolt out the gauge cluster comes out seems pretty firm um it's better than it just flopping around in there and then like i said sorry about that this guy will go like that and kind of camouflage it a little bit but yeah, so we need to go get some odds and ends parts, I gotta and take this we'll call. be back.
Does it hit? Yeah. Awesome. Go all the way over. Make sure uh, we don't need to cut out any from the side. We have to tighten it. I have to have Austin make me my own HWC oh, that shifter. Pretty, that looks pretty cool. But first, I gotta learn where all the gears are. This one. I wish I wouldn't have cut it back this far back here, but I guess it's only metal. It's kind of deceiving because it's straight down from there, but the shifter goes way up. So I made a mistake, but. Tommy, it's there are metal. no mistakes, only happy accidents. And um, the console will go over that anyways. Yeah, uh, I could, it ain't nothing, just patch it up. Oh well, yeah. So this seat is out of a U-Haul truck. And we usually use it for like mock up on anything, but this one is just not gonna work. We gotta put the seat in it because we don't know how far how to move far the, the shifter. shifter can come over. Okay, so where we left off was we were putting the shifter in this thing, and then we had to go in and edit a video, and then the rest of the time, you know, we just said we were working on this thing Monday and Tuesday. Well, it is the following Monday now. In freezing. Yeah. Um, you all know we're weenies, and it's weenie season, okay? It is. We're cold. I was kind of out here in the rain a little bit trying to hook up the shifter linkage, and we ran into a problem. A big problem. Yeah. So... The throwout bearing on the transmission decided to come apart and the throwout bearing is inside the transmission. The only way to fix that is to pull the transmission. And we have not had this transmission out or anything. So, you know, thankfully we caught it now instead of trying to drive it. Yeah. But, um, so that's kind of a blessing in disguise, but it still sucks. It's freezing cold and we've got to remove this transmission. Yeah. And real quick, kind of the game plan this morning was to hook the shifter linkage up and take it for a drive. Now we're pulling the transmission out. So without us talking anymore. Because we know some of you are like, you talk too much. But we have to explain what we're doing. Yes. So All let's right. pull this transmission out and let's get going. Mm -hmm. This is the passenger side of the transmission and this pin and it's just like that on the driver's side, except for on the other side, it's got a uh, lever on it, but that pin's not supposed to do that. Right on you. Unlike Donkey Kong. And then I gotta. Go Position up in here. Hold his little head up. Hold the flashlight. <laughs> you all know how holding the flashlight goes. Yeah, she's not holding it in the right spot half the time. Alright, so that's number three. We gotta buzz it out of here. We're getting there. I'm breathing in my eyeball. Hey, get <laughs> I'm beginning to think Hannah is a lot of trouble. She was the last one to drive it. Mm -hmm. What's crazy is the throw out bearing, it's just floating in there, but we drove it up here and we didn't take. We know, ain't done nothing we, to the transmission. Yeah. Only thing I can think of is when we took the, the cab off, the throw out bearing, the rod, unless it got bumped and kind of, it was already about to fall off and it bumped it all the way, you know, loosened it up, I guess. I don't know. The only good thing about this is Lisa did it in our driveway. And not on the way to Florida or yeah. in Florida. Or we'd be doing this on the way to Florida. Your, your nose is, you're blowing it right in my eyeball. Well, you're lucky I ain't got snot dripping on you. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here is our other bolt. All right, let's uh, keep a cranking. Where the bolt is. Sun's coming out, that's good. Yeah, but we're under the truck. <laughs> yeah. My toes are frozen. I got insulated pants, leggings on, three layers on top, a toboggan. You know what we could do is if we, if we bump the starter, we could do this. Mm. <laughs> it's almost right there. So we were trying to do some time lapse for you earlier, taking the bell housing bolts out, but um, really didn't work out because it's hard to see. Now you can lay your head. <laughs> You're not helping me at all. <laughs> 
my you mean me breathing yeah you're, i'll do this you're drying up my eyeball <laughs> <laughs> i did brush my teeth so it's probably spicy why is it spicy <laughs> Hat. Seems like Hannah's projects take the most time. We ain't been in this too long. I'm gonna need safety glass. You keep breathing in my nose, my eye. You weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how, where else you on my head? I have to blink. Just lay down. Yeah. We'll do have those couple of photo shoots. <laughs> All right, there's, what is that, number four? Yeah. I felt like you got to that one a lot quicker. I'm getting quicker, homie. There you are. Hey, guess what? There. That's it. Nothing. It's the end. Yeah. Yeah, look. So we're done. Yeah. So now we can pull the transmission. So there's only four bolts in it. So real quick, while I'm under here, shout out to Clay Sampley. He is a, uh, a homie of mine that I met through YouTube. He's got a uh, medium duty and full size semi truck repair and in Alabama. In Alabama, and he, you know, I kind of, well, I didn't kind of message him. I did message <laughs> him, and I kind of, I said, "Hey, what is up with this?" And he said, "You got to pull the transmission." Said, Are you kidding me? If he was closer, he'd be pulling, he'd be the, pulling transmission. the transmission. I wouldn't be. <laughs> That's right. So, I guess uh, if you want to hop out, grab the floor jack. We do have the floor jack under here supporting the transmission. We have a ratchet strap on it. Uh, we're trying to be as safe as we can. Ideally, if we had the cab off, we could take the the gantry with some chain hoist and pull it out of here, but we Do don't want to pull the cab. Light. I think I'm good. Just slowly pull this out. You want this? No, I'm good. Okay. All right, here we go. So can they see this or should we move it? Let me look. So this is the part you of YouTube. All see it? Shake, shake your head, nod your head. Yes yeah, this no. is the part of YouTube you guys don't see. Trying to uh, position the camera um, and stuff like that. The only thing they can see is the top of it a little bit, uh, but the oil guy's know, in the way. You'll move it back here. Yeah. Though. Transmission. All right, so here's the problem. Somehow the throw out bearing bracket is broke. So this is going back and forth and this was letting it go back and forth i don't know if it was just i don't know when we first started the first time i did hear something i wonder if that's what i heard mm -hmm. you mean the clanging yeah and i yeah, almost I wonder if this rod it was just kind of in a bind or something so we obviously we broke it somehow i don't really know how but this thing was Maybe this linkage was over too far and got it in a bind. I'm not sure, but either way, it's broke. So now we got to fix that. I don't even really know where to begin with that. Guess we can go to Crossroads. Call a friend. Yeah. Can we phone a friend? Clay. <laughs> Come fix it. Well, I guess let's, uh, I guess we need like a 15 mil. get that out? Yeah, we got to have this bracket off here to start with. Okay. So... Where is that? All right, so here's what we got. Here's our little throw out bearing bracket thing and we <laughs> broke it. So I don't know if I had it, whenever we were messing with the linkage, it made it may have been in a bind, I guess. And then whenever it started, it, it snapped it off. Kind of sucks, but 
it is what it is. Can't do nothing about it now. Just got to get it fixed. There is a uh, semi store down the road. So we're going to go there and see if they have one of these. And if they do, we'll go ahead and fix it. Another thing is we wouldn't have had to take the flywheel bolts out. I was kind of looking up in there and I thought that's what was uh, hanging it up, but it ended up being just I had uh, a top bolt, not all the way out. So it is what it is. I guess, uh, I guess let's wash up and let's go to the, let's go to Crossroads and see if they can help us. All right, so we did go to Crossroads and they have the part, well, they have to order it, but it'll be here tomorrow. So for now, we are turning into two little lumberjacks. We've got wood all around us and we're gonna cut some firewood for this winter for the wood, Steve. All right, guys, unfortunately, that's gonna be the end of this video. We really wanted to dry that thing, but while we had the transmission out, I went ahead and pulled the clutch out and the clutch is pretty worn. So I got a new clutch. It should be here tomorrow morning. So it's really delaying some stuff, but shout out to Crossroads there in Bedford for hooking us up with a new clutch and uh, really getting everything the next day. They got that clutch fork the next day, the clutch will, and then the clutch itself will be here tomorrow morning. And also thank you, Clay, for helping out uh, on winging me through this. Believe it or not, I, I've never worked on a medium duty truck. So it's kind of all new territory for me. And it's exciting because Corey enjoys learning, but the problem is Brother. we are on a deadline. We're on a time crunch. So learning all new things right before we are <laughs> need this truck together, it's, it's really stressful. So um, I'm sorry that all this is happening. It, he keeps saying I'm a lot of trouble, but I, it's you just have to pull that clutch out. I mean, <laughs> I didn't have to pull the clutch out, but I was already there, so I kind of wanted to see what it was. Cause last thing I want to do is a month down the road, or once we get to Florida, the clutch blows apart. This way, it'll have a nice new clutch, and you know she's wanting to keep the truck, so it's going to be better in the long run. And we're already there. I mean, we already got the transmission, so why not go ahead and put a clutch in it? Clutch is like five hundred bucks. It sucks to spend another five hundred bucks, but we're already there. Anyways, Hannah's wanting to show you a um, okay. something. So, when we were at the Eville Shindig, that's Evansville Shindig, Eville. Um, Corey's saying evil. Yeah, part of that's my fault because I, I've had some uh, comments are like, the evil Shindig. Part of that's because my English sucks, as you guys know. I It's called the Eville Shindig, and I was calling it the evil Shindig, so that's my bad. But it was a great show. Um, the vintage campers have really, you know, just caught our eye. Yeah. We we want one so bad. So, anyways, um, but while we were there, we met this subscriber of ours, and it was really wonderful to, you know, kind of talk to him. And he was selling. I would love to show you what's in here, but I ate them all. I didn't um, even get one. It is freeze dried, sugar free taffy, and he's doing freeze dried Skittles. If you've never yeah, had good. one, because I had never even heard of that. If you freeze dry them, they're hard. And then they just like melt in your mouth. I don't yeah. even know if he got to experience that because I think I ate them all by myself. But anyways, the um, proceeds, it's $5 for a bag. I'm not trying to be a salesman here, but the proceeds go to their um, mission trip to Mexico. The, this church is going there. They're going to be building houses. So say that you've never been on a mission trip. You're just not that kind of person, but you can still help someone go. And um, I will put this at the end of this. So if you want to help them out, I mean, just go ahead. It's $5 for a bag and you won't regret it because it's good. fantastic. Yeah. Um, but anyways, so without us rambling on. We're hungry as usual. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> it's not pizza. Hannah, Hannah had a good idea. We're going to have soup and grilled cheese. And mm -hmm. then we're going to hang out here in the shop. It's kind of an early night. It's nice to be inside for once out of the wind. We got our wood stove going. We've been cutting some firewood. So yeah, I guess we'll see you guys next Wednesday, but don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Minnie, what do you think?